Hey everybody, it's the Burger Dude, and today I want to show you how I make some vegan deep fried burger balls. Now if you're scratching your head going, what the heck is a burger ball? It's essentially some plant-based meat that's been stuffed inside some mashed potatoes, then breaded in crushed up potato chips, and lastly we're going to deep fry them. These are inspired by another dish called Papas Rellenas, which were made famous to me by a local Cuban bakery out here in Los Angeles called Porto's. They're super delicious, but sadly, not vegan. So I thought I'd make some myself and do a Burger Dude spin on them as well. And it's worth noting that this is the first time I've made these, so it's really less a recipe and more me just having fun improvising in the kitchen. But that being said, check the description for a link to the recipe based off of what I did end up doing. And with that, let's get to making some burger balls. So first we're gonna do the potatoes and I tried to do a little bit of a shortcut with these but it didn't really work out. So if you are gonna try these, I would just suggest not using as much liquid as it calls for because they're gonna to be too runny. So instead we're gonna use some good old russet potatoes and just peel your potatoes as you will. And then next we're gonna go ahead and chop them up into, I usually do about quarters. Uh, I like to slice them up like this, like little cylinders. Just make sure they're roughly the same size. And that's to mostly ensure that they cook evenly. So we're gonna add them to a pot of cold water, give it some good old garlic salt, and then we're gonna bring that to a boil, lower the heat to simmer, and then we're gonna cook it until it's fork tender, which is gonna take about 20 minutes or so which is a great time to put our burger mixture together. So we're gonna start off with a diced onion. And when you scooch stuff off your cutting board like that, make sure to use the dull end of a knife instead of the sharp end so you don't screw it up. After about 10 minutes, we're gonna add in our plant-based meat. And I ended up using way too much. I probably could have just used half of this. I'm using two packs of the Impossible Burger. You can use Beyond or really any ground beef that is plant-based will totally work. And we're just gonna brown this for about six to seven minutes or so. Once it looks like this, we're gonna start seasoning it. So I'm using this Montreal steak seasoning, which is pretty good. But of course, as always, just season it however you like. Anything that you got your house that you know is gonna taste good on burgers is gonna taste good in here as well. So now we're just gonna cook this down for a few more minutes and then we're gonna start to add in our liquids. And I decided to do a little bit of an experiment because I wanted to see, I've never done this before, what happens if you throw in some mustard as well as some ketchup? Because these are two pretty common condiments that you put on a burger. So I thought, why not throw this in here? And you know what? It, it totally worked. I was very happy with the results. So if you want to experiment, give it a shot. And if you don't want to give it a shot, that's fine. But either way, we're going to throw in some tomato paste as well as some beefless broth. And what we're doing here is just adding in some liquid to help reduce down and get a nice kind of almost like a sloppy joe consistency to our burger mixture, but not quite as sloppy as a sloppy joe. You just wanna make sure that it's not so crumbly that it's gonna be hard to work with. And that's the kind of consistency you want right there. So once you got that, we're gonna add it to a bowl and then throw it in the fridge so that it can cool down for a bit. And at this point, our potatoes are done. As you can see there, perfectly fork tender, sliding right off of that fork. And so what we're gonna do now is get a potato ricer. And if you are not familiar with one of these, I highly suggest one. I, this is my first time using it and I am a potato ricer fan for life. This, this thing, no more potato masher. My potato masher is, well, I'll still keep it because I use it for other stuff, but it's not touching potatoes, let me tell you that. So anyways, after we rice it, we're gonna add in some plant-based milk, unsweetened of course, some vegan butter, and then some cornstarch. Now this is a tip that I got from Alicia over at Best Bites Forever. And what's gonna happen with the cornstarch is it's gonna help the potatoes thicken and really become super malleable and easy to work with because we're gonna to wanna to roll them up. And so what you wanna do, this is another tip that I got from Alicia, which is great. Go ahead and make a patty, and then if you can hold it and it doesn't fall apart because of gravity, then you got a good consistency there. And now what we want to do is we want to season these potatoes up. So I'm going to add in some nooch like that. I don't know how much I added, probably two, three, maybe four tablespoons worth. And uh, again, garlic salt. This is super duper customizable. You really just need to have fun with it and just you know keep tasting it, figure out what kind of flavors you want. I decided, you know what, I'm going to throw in some grated cheddar cheese because why not? I had some lying around that I needed to use up. This is also a great recipe to, if you have some stuff lying around that you gotta use up, just throw whatever in there. Lowry's, sure, why not? Put in some Lowry's seasoned salt. You can really, like I said, anything. 
So once you got it seasoned up to your liking, get some sort of scooper. I'm using an ice cream scooper, but the reason why I'm using it is to make sure that they all are uniform in the same size. And you're gonna just kind of put a little patty in your hand like that, pat it down. And I'm using about a heaping tablespoon of my burger mixture. And you're just gonna kind of smash it down in there. And then all you wanna do is just kind of fold over the potatoes like so. It takes some, it takes some practice. I'm not gonna uh, sugarcoat it. The first time you do this, I mean, I'm, this is like my 12th time and I'm still having kind of a hard time. <laughs> but what you wanna make sure is that there's no holes. You wanna make sure that like right there, you wanna cinch that sort of stuff up, make sure there's no cracks or anything like that. Should be nice and smooth on the outside. But once you got them rolled up and they're looking good, we're gonna add them to a parchment lined baking tray like so. There you go. I think I got 17 out of that batch. I used four pounds of potatoes. And then we're going to add it to a freezer for about 45 minutes or so. And that's how much meat I had left over, which is way too much. But, you know, I used it for Sloppy Joes and whatnot. So now this is also a good opportunity to put together a burger sauce. And I improvised this. And I was also using a brand new mayo that I've never tried before, a vegan mayo. And I'm not entirely sure that I'm crazy about it. I don't know the brand of it, but it I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll go look later and put it in the description when I remember. But uh, it kind of reminded me of, I think it's what Miracle Whip tastes like. Um, I never really ate a lot of mayo or Miracle Whip as a kid, but it reminded me of like the kind of taste, like when you're at your friend's house and you know their parents might make you like lunch and they would put way too much mayo on your like ham and cheese sandwich. It's kind of tasted like that stuff. Anyways, let's get on to the breading. You can use panko for your breadcrumbs, totally cool. But today I wanted to use some ruffles because I've been curious about, you know, taking some potato chips and mashing and smushing them up and then frying them. So I put them in a bag, which I have remembered now is not the best way to do it because A, we're using up a bag for one, but also it's just not very efficient. And I remember now, oh yeah, I have a food processor you know, for this very occasion, you know, crushing up a bunch of dang chips. So I use that much better. Of course, I don't know why I just immediately put my fingers in there, but I did. So now we're going to get some just egg. You could also just use some plant-based milk, which is what I would have used, but I had to use up this just egg before it went bad. I'm actually augmenting it with a little bit of plant-based milk there, that ripple that I always use. And we're going to get a cup of flour as well. And this is our dredging station. Go ahead and whisk that up. Don't forget. We're gonna get a pot of oil up to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And I recommend an oil like canola, vegetable, something with a high smoke point. You don't wanna use something like olive oil. It's gonna taste weird too if you use olive oil, so don't use it. Anyways, once we get our oil up to 375, we're gonna dredge that burger ball first in the flour and then into the vegan egg mixture and then into our crushed up ruffles. And in a lot of recipes, they do a double dredge of the egg and the breadcrumbs, but I'm just doing a single dredge. I wanted to see what would happen and it was totally fine. It didn't need to double dredge it. And also you get a little bit more mileage out of all of your dredging ingredients as well. So once it looks like that, and our oil is up to 375, go ahead and drop them in. And obviously you can see there that I didn't fill my pot up enough or I didn't use a deep enough pot, but that's all right. We're just gonna roll it around and make sure that we get all the sides browned. And once it looks something like that, it's ready to be taken off and then you just wanna rest it on a rack. I didn't film any of that, but believe me, I rested this stuff on racks. And I also had to take a little bite and that's what they look like on the inside. I actually just cut that in half. I wanted to see how it came out. And there you go. Like I said before, let them rest on a wire rack. And then once you've got your burger sauce all plated up, it's time to get to dipping. And I know that this recipe might seem like a lot of work, but it's totally worth it. I mean, look at that thing. How often do you eat something like this? You know, you got your mashed potatoes with your burger mixture inside of it, deep fried in some ruffles and some burger sauce. I mean, you just don't make this sort of thing every day. You know what I mean? And if burger sauce isn't your thing, or you'd rather just dip your balls in some cheese, go ahead and check the recipe link in the description for my amazing cheese sauce recipe. I mean, look at that glorious cheese ball coming right at your face. These things are so freaking scrumptious and ridiculous. I really do think you all should make this recipe. And if you do, let me know how it went. Tag me in your photos on Instagram. I hope you're all doing great, and I'll see you next week.